Hi everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to talk about replacing a nose seal on a Lycoming engine. So how do I know when the nose seal needs to get replaced? So if I can turn this around, it doesn't look like it wants to turn around, so I'm just going to turn the camera around here and show you. First signs are, hey, you're noticing oil underneath the uh, cowling in the hanger more than usual. Here, if you look at the front end of the cowling, you can actually see a very nice ring, straight line, right here about where the starter ring gear is, and then a bunch of oil all the way down the cowling. So we're going to go back to the airplane here. I'm going to show you what is going on here. Again, you can see a bunch of oil now coming all the way down through the front of this engine, just getting everywhere. And we're going to look up here, and there's a nose seal that actually, I don't know if the light will help here, but it's a rubber seal. It looks like this, and it actually seals the crankshaft from the oil bath in the engine there. So there's pressure up there, and that needs to be sealed and installed properly. This is a rebuilt engine. Don't know who built this engine, but it's very obvious that they installed this no seal with RTV, as you can see here. And if we look inside the ring gear, there's all kinds of RTV that has come out. So that is very, very dangerous. If this no seal were to pop out in flight, you're going to lose all the oil and you're going to be looking for a landing here pretty soon. The only two things you're supposed to use to put this no seal in are this Dow 737 or Pliobon. So now what we got to do is work this seal out clean it up really well, and then we'll try and put the new seal in. So we'll try and get you some more pictures as we go through this. Okay, we're back again here, and we're going to show you. We talked about the two sealants that are allowed to be used, the 737 or Pliobon. In this case, our TV was used, and somebody was on a wing and a prayer here. I want you to see how easy this no seal comes out. You see that? Look at that. And there you can see the RTV. That is an absolute no-no. Lucky this didn't blow out in flight sooner. Really, really, really bad there. So we're going to fix that. All right, next step, we've actually not covered everything here in the video, but the first and most important part is once you get the broken seal out, is to clean up the shaft and all remnants of any other old glue that was in there, whether it's Pliobon, the 737, or in this case, the RTV. So, uh, and approved cleaners are things like acetone or MEK or other solvents. So, uh, used a whole bunch of MEK here, paper towels, think we got it pretty clean. Now, this is the most difficult part, actually, of this whole job, and that is these no seals come in two styles. One is split, so you can put it on very easily and then glue the seams together. To me, those have more of a chance to leak as opposed to a single piece seal. The single piece seal, unfortunately, is really hard to get on. So we're gonna show you this trick. Uh, we'll put a, a screwdriver through this hole and then we've got this tool here, okay? We're gonna... All right, here we are. This is the hardest part of doing this. We're gonna try and stretch this all the way around over top of the crankshaft here. Oh, almost there. Boom, got it. Look at that. Okay. Got stuck on this thing. Yep, there we go. All right. Perfect. Now we're going to clean that up again real well because we put lubricant on to get it to slide over. So we'll use acetone on it again, clean it up, and then use the 737 to get a good effect, a good seal in there. There we go. Worked. One more thing I neglected to mention is there's a little spring that is in the back side of each of these seals. You remove the spring prior to stretching it over, then we have to put this back on and tuck it back into the seal. So that's the next step before we can glue everything together. Thanks. Okay, we've got the new seal all cleaned up with acetone. We don't see any more RTV in there. So now the trick is to get the RTV here. Now I got to call it RTV. It's Dow Seal 737. And we're going to go all the way around and make sure it gets in all the joints. Okay. 
And we want to be careful to not get any of this on the engine, uh, on the crankshaft. Yeah. All right, I'm going to wipe it in there real good with my finger. Make sure we get that everywhere we want. Okay, got a nice bead all the way around that. No dead spots. Make sure you get it down into that seal. Now we're going to push that back into the engine compartment, into the nose of the engine. Right like that, and you can hear it click in place. Let me get another screwdriver here. It wants to pop back out. Careful not to get any of the 737 on the crankshaft. And I did coat that with a light film of grease ahead of time. So that should be good. Now we're going to get in there and try and wipe everything. And then that has to cure for 24 hours before we run the engine. All right, we're back to close out the no seal installation. Uh, as we showed you a little bit ago, uh, we glued that in. We let it dry it overnight. It's in there nice and solid. We're going to wait 24 hours before we run the engine. We don't want to build up any oil pressure behind it yet. But in the meantime, we're reinstalling the crank trigger for the electro air ignition. So the way you do this is you set up number one cylinder on top dead center. And you should see there's a hole right there in the crank trigger reel that should align with the magnetic pickup here. And, and then so we tighten up this, and so now that's all set upright. And we'll put the prop back on and hopefully run it here this afternoon once we, it's 24 hours around one o'clock on this thing. Now, one other thing we wanna show you, uh, one of the things you wanna do when you're doing a condition inspection on the engine compartment is make sure you physically grab everything. Pull on it, tug it, you know, exhaust systems, alternators, you'll find broken brackets, etc. In this case, you can come down here, Darian, I happen to be tugging on the starter. Look at this. I don't know if that's coming out good enough there, if I should put yeah. a light on it. Do we need a light on it? No, okay. So that's loose. So we're gonna pull this starter here and see what's causing that. Hopefully we can just tighten something up or we end up having to replace the starter. So again, tug on everything in that engine compartment. Have a good weekend.